Warning, mature content ahead. You are now entering the Atomic Nerd Alert. What is going on, all of you Dorcasaurs out there? Hi, how's it going today in this uh, COVID-19 lockdown? Oh, yes, the lockdown is real. Yeah, I'm back again with the ever-constructive Holly. Hi, guys. And of course, I am your overlord, your Dorcasaur, Jordan. Today, we have a kind of new series that we're going to be doing periodically. Mm-hmm. Because this lockdown, we have no idea when it's going to be lifted. That is true. There's a lot of gamers out there. Yes. <laughs> I know. I am a huge gamer. I have over, almost over like 300 titles that I've played. Maybe already. a little, maybe a little more than Probably. That because we do have on our Xbox where we can download if we have any extra space. Random games that are on the console itself. Right. With that, we don't have the Xbox Game Pass. We do have, uh, I have the gold membership, so I download that. We also have like a lot of the old 360 games that are now backwards compatible, mm -hmm. but we also have the PS4. Yep. I, I find it funny that every time we have a new console, uh, for PlayStation, it's always the even numbers. Yeah. Because we our first PlayStation was the PS2, and that was absolutely phenomenal. And then we went to the PS4 because, you know, if you got if you if you have the Xbox One, you gotta have PS4 as well. Oh yeah. We're more than just one specific console per group. We have like the Wii, we have GameCube, Nintendo 64. I mean, we've got it all. Almost all, I should say. <laughs> we just need the Switch. And then the <laughs> PS5 and the Xbox Series X, which we'll get into the Xbox Series X in a bit, especially because it looks like a tower and such. But like one, mm -hmm. one of our future episodes, we will be talking about games that are to come on the next console. Oh, one yeah. of them is including Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Oh, yes. I stayed up just to watch the the premiere for that. Um, oh my god, I'm so glad I did. It, it was fantastic. Worth it? Worth it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So because we are gamers, we're going to dive into one of my childhood stories that I love to read and a lot of my other friends used to read all the time. It's the Redwall series, mm -hmm. which uh, we recently found out that that was turned into a cartoon by Canada. A Canadian yes. company did a cartoon for it. Kitty, kitty. Oh God, the bird, the kitty, kitty. <laughs> it's so annoying. But of course, talking about games, there is one that we were um, wanting to... I, I was wanting to play this game for a while, ever since I saw that it came out. Developed by Soma Games. Mm -hmm. um, they are a Christian game company yes. that has a few games out. Mostly it's on mobile, but they started to uh, acquire the uh, Brian Jakes series of Redwall. Correct. So they have two core games out. One is on every console, um, and then the other is on... Well, sorry, not every console. Um, I'm not sure if it's on Nintendo Switch just yet. Nintendo, it's hard to get a license through them. But it's on Xbox, PlayStation, and computer. And then there is also one that is on mobile, and that's Escape the Gloamer, which I played a little bit of that one. But we are going to dive into our thoughts, our opinions, what we liked about it, and what we did not like about with Red Wall, the Lost Legends of Red Wall, the Scout. Yes. Holly, you played it before I got a chance to, and I was watching you play mm -hmm. it for a bit. What were your initial thoughts on it? So initially, if you just do a straight run of the game, um, it could without doing any of the side missions, it could be roughly about 30, 35 minutes of gameplay. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a really short game. 
Um, but the one thing that I noticed was the backstory before you get to decide whether you play as the character Sophia or the character Liam. It's a little lengthy. I, I noticed that too when I was playing through. And it, it kind of lost me a little bit with how lengthy it was. Was there just too much exposition for you? Uh, I don't know if it was too much exposition or if it was just too much, like, too much script that just lost me. But, I mean, besides that, you know, the video game design was great. Mm -hmm. The colors were amazing. Um, the controls are super easy. They're yeah. super easy, which I like that because I first started out playing the NES. Super, super easy. <laughs> Yeah, that one, um, because it's a rated E game, mm -hmm. it is definitely catered towards kids. Oh, yes. There was a couple times with uh, running up the walls and trying to go across beams and such, just like at the beginning mm -hmm. of it, that the control wasn't that responsive sometimes. So it felt like going up a wall on like Assassin's Creed, like uh, Assassin's Creed 2, that buggy, buggy, buggy moment when you are climbing up um, the first cathedral and you accidentally launch yourself into oblivion. That's happened a couple times <laughs> with yeah. this one. But other than that, like it's it's fairly decent with with the mechanics. Oh yeah. The one thing that I had difficulty with was the sneaking. Yeah. Like you're sneaking to get around the rats or just when rats you're first eagles. learning how to do it. It it took me a little bit and I was starting to get frustrated. The rat the rat maze. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was starting to get a little frustrated and you can attest to that. I can get frustrated pretty easily. <laughs> I was even getting a little frustrated with that. Mostly I wish that you were able to collect all of the items and if you had to restart it that you got to keep those items yeah but in parts of it when you are um running sneaking and it has the the um lantern on the on the um wooden dummies when you're going through all that it's still having you be in the quiet sneak mode even though you're not away from that and it restarts you because you're being too loud that I did not like at all. Yeah, I didn't like that either. If there's a stretch of just nothing, there's no enemies, no no nothing in front of you, you should be able to run. That was pretty frustrating for me. Right. Um, also, what I didn't really like was the optional missions, which was like the side missions, how mm -hmm. when you're running towards the abbey and the, I want to say the friar's house was caught on fire yeah. before you got to the abbey. If you didn't, you know, do something with that house, it automatically fails you with the mission. Yeah, that should have been optional. Instead of saying, like, it's an optional um, a task, it should have been... And then a... automatically fails you for not doing that optional mission. It shouldn't... You shouldn't be failed for not doing an optional thing. If you're wanting to do, like, a speed run, it should take you, like, about five minutes on that and but having those optional missions where it automatically fails you if you don't do those optional missions takes away the point of it being optional correct correct yeah so another thing that i was kind of meh on it's checkpoint to checkpoint base save it's not a hard manual save where like in the gamer world save as you go mm -hmm. save often it doesn't have that option. You have to go until it saves at the next checkpoint. That doesn't really bother me as much. If there was a save feature, that would be nice for like extra save because we all know that oh, definitely. the auto save doesn't always auto save. Correct. They could fail at any moment, especially if you have like a power failure um, uh, for some reason, like like a storm or something knocks your power out. It could completely oh, yeah. take away those files completely and you'd have to restart you, it. Exactly. You'd have to restart from the beginning. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that I'm a little mm, with how it's just checkpoint to checkpoint based saving. 
if you were able to go into small uh, areas where it has the checkpoint and gives you a point to be able to manually save or like halfway point to be able to manually save like um say like a dark souls where you have from bonfire to bonfire to be able to save or, or would you be okay with something like that versus yeah. the checkpoint yeah okay as long as there would be, like, some form of where you can actually manual save, mm -hmm. I would be, I think I would have liked it a lot but more. It would definitely help with being able to keep your items. Yes. That would be nice. Yes. So that might be a, an option, maybe later in, in the development with Soma. Mm -hmm. I did really appreciate the art style. Mm. Mm-hmm. The art style, because a lot of people say that it doesn't have the best graphics, but it's the art of it. I mean, it's like a small, maybe like 50 or something uh, team for the entire development, which I right. absolutely applaud that. I've, I've delved into video game design before in my video games class, and that is super hard to do on your own. It it's is. been a couple years, and I still have not been able to get a 2D... Um, finished well you haven't e yeah you haven't even finished that video game you were working on <laughs> yeah it, it's been a while so like being able to have it for different platforms and code it and get the the licensing and everything for xbox and, and playstation and, and computer which it's easier for computer than it is for the other two right but having those options um it, it definitely is a, a an applaudance there. The art style is very much so reminiscent of like the um, title of Moss Flower, if you look at the books. Mm -hmm. So like some of the um, books, it depends on what kind of book that you got from from Penguin Publishing, but they had different like different art uh, on the cover, and sometimes like the Harry Potters where there was like some art on the inside, right. Um, but mostly it definitely had that art on the cover and it was also very reminiscent of the Canadian, the Canadian cartoon as well, just in a 3D model version. So it was, it was pretty nice to see like yeah, childhood can... on, on there. Yeah, I can see that because you were more into this series than I was. Yeah. This was like your absolute favorite as a kid it, it it's something that like gets you into the fantasy genre so like the the lost legends of red wall or the lord of the rings that might be a little too much for a, a five-year-old um, oh yeah there's also the chronicles of narnia which moss flower that was the first one it's pretty much like the legend of martin um and then afterward it's it's about um what's it what was his name i forget it matthias yes so this one is about just like some of the scouts in the abbey so it's pretty nice to see that and that you got to choose if you wanted to play as male or female sophia or liam yeah, yeah. though i do kind of wish that there was like a little customization in a way mm -hmm. to kind of customize fur color or whether you wanted the scout outfit to be a certain color to kind of give it a little more personality. See, I think that's a little ambitious for the amount of team. And I get, had. I get that now. Maybe like a couple um, different clothing options. Say, if you were able to smell like these uh, twenty different smells here. You got a different color or something for the um, scout outfit. Yeah. That that would be something pretty cool. But all in all, I mean, I'm pretty impressed with the team mm -hmm. and how little the team actually is. Yeah. And coming out with a game like this. Something that I, I do wish that they also did, even though it's made more so for kids, is have something a little bit more inclusive for people with disabilities, like a uh, colorblind uh, feature or something. Or uh, mm. Because like all the smells are based off of colors. Right. Uh, there's different patterns and such, but like some of those colors and patterns might blend together. There was the blue and red with the first part of the mission mm -hmm. when you're just learning to smell like open this door. It has to be this uh, blue and red thing is what's over at this door to be able to open yeah. it. 
that even for me i i can see like color like anybody i do a lot of color correction and such but even for me with that it was a little difficult to to see mm -hmm. so for kids and for colorblind that would be nice to have like a colorblind option for it right because there's a lot of people out there who suffer from colorblindness mm -hmm. And certain colors, they just mesh together and turn, like, one shade of brown. Whether it's a light shade of brown or a, a darker shade of brown. That's the only way that they could differentiate what color it is. There was also another thing that got a little frustrating for me as well. Running away from some of the rats and trying to get to some of the certain cheeses and certain smells, certain herbs... You got caught really, really easily. Oh, you, you yeah. You can use your slingshot, and I know that they were main, mainly wanting to stay away from uh, killing anybody. Right. Um, but it would have been nice to be if able to bonk them. Like, bonk them, and they would be out for, like, five seconds. It would have, like, a countdown of five, where they just have, like, birds floating around their head or something like that. I would say... If the slingshot was used to knock them out mm -hmm. for more than five seconds, because five seconds is really quick, you would need at least ten. You would still have... For me, it would be more so like you would still have the amount of time that it would be like, I am finding you. Where are you? I smell you, mousy. Like one of those. You still have that same amount of time because that's about like five seconds. And if he gets a little too close, you'd be able to bonk him for five more seconds, be able to hide that way. So it just keeps that, the difficulty there. Okay. Where it doesn't take away from the gameplay, but if you're, like, trying to, like, hit the the weasel or the rat, um, if you're trying to get them away from, from you while you're running, even if you, like, toss you, like, do the slingshot towards another place, if they catch your scent... You're done. Yeah. It, it, they're going to keep on that scent. They'll so keep it would on give it scent. more of a, a fair chance that way. It wouldn't actually harm them. Um, you're not killing anybody. You're not harming anybody. But you're still able to go ahead and, and bonk them. Yeah, kind of stun them for a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's just stunning for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that happening more so than anything. Something else that was a little too much as well, the protagonist was way too close to the screen. Mm. Way yeah. too close. Because if you turn camera angle one way, it's like you're looking straight up their nose. Yeah. <laughs> well, for me, it kind of felt like you're in first person anyway. Um, mm -hmm. So if you wanted to keep it in first person, though, it's nice to have that that third person perspective. But it felt like if you are in, like, a Skyrim or something and you have, like, a giant uh, pot that you're carrying around with you, it takes up too much of the field of vision. You're not able to see anything else around you. And see, I'm more of a third-person type of gamer. Mm -hmm. I, It really depends on the actual game for it to, for me to like it in first person. Yeah. So I like this in third person. I just wish that the character was a little farther away. Like a, because there would be times where you would look at it and you were like, whoa, I'm I'm getting dizzy from this. Yeah. I mean, like, even though we're at least a good, like, ten feet away looking at the screen, it's still a little too close. Yeah. If there was an option to be able to adjust your character, like, start it out at that level, but be able to, like, bring your camera out just a little bit. Just oh, a little bit. It would be definitely. Perfect. Yeah. You'd be I able agree. to find your sweet spot for that. I agree. Um, what do you think about the how there's no difficulty setting? I like that. Um, I think for little kids or for non-gamers, um, especially people that don't really do the stealth, like you don't really do the stealth at all. No. Um, for people that don't do the stealth, at least have maybe a um, story option and then the normal option. So... You would get more of the, the story, you'd be able to still experience things, but it would take a little bit more time for people to detect you, just a little bit more time for you to scurry away, do what you need to do, especially that last boss battle running away. I can't tell you how many times mm. I died. Don't even get me started on that. <laughs> I died probably more times than you did. 
Just yeah. trying to get away from the big bad boss rat. Yeah, I kept launching myself back into him for some reason. The control wasn't as responsive at that point. It was still a good game. Yeah. It, it, okay, so since we like nitpicked it just a little bit uh -huh. for, for game gaming and such, what did you enjoy about it? What did you like about it? What I really liked about it, obviously, was the graphics for this specific game, as well as the colorization. It was bright, it was vibrant, it was something that would get your attention, as well as being the best type of graphics that the small team could come up with, which is a lot. That was a lot, and it was so appreciative. Yeah, for me, Soma Games did pretty well with this title, especially for it being a small indie, um, low to no budget, um, right. Producing it. This is what, Act 1? Yeah, this was Act 1, and then uh, Escape the Gloomer was the second one. You haven't played Escape the Gloomer. No. That one is along the lines of, like, a uh, planet fall. Let me look up real fast. Yeah, so it was like a, a, a planet fall or... Um, a colossal cave adventure. It's more so like a colossal cave adventure. You don't know what these games are at all. No. <laughs> they were created back in the late, late, uh, like early 80s, like late 70s, early 80s. Uh, I just pulled it up here so Holly can see what one looks like for colossal cave adventure. It is a text-based game. So you are reading what the game entails, what it's the um, instructions, what you want to do with it. Um, and then you would have a search bar that says what's next and you would type in what's next for it. So if you're it, wanting your, it's like a the story based. Is it kind of like a create your own story in a way? Kind of, yeah. Okay. Uh, just like those old Mario books that you would get at, at like a 10 cent store or something where it's turn to page this for this option or this for this okay, option. Okay, okay. But with the, this one you have a little bit more, uh, you have different turns, like a, a specific number of, of turns that you can do. And you can uh, type in turn left, pick up item pick up this, look at map. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it gives you those sort of things. But with Escape the Gloomer, it's fully voice acted as well. So it's a text-based, and it's it's really nice because for people that are blind or dyslexic, especially like me, I'm absolutely horrifically dyslexic. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, I've been in speech therapy for, for several, several, several years throughout my academic career. Mm -hmm. But it gives you, um, you can be like, turn left, turn right, um, go out of cave. And it would say, oh, yeah, the such and such went out of the cave. It looks like this and this. He wants to turn back because he doesn't want to have the blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? Kind of reminds me of <clears throat> Oregon Trail in a way. Kind of, yeah. So I, I, I appreciate that where it gave you back it, the... I appreciate it where it gave you back the nostalgia from the original video games. Because these were the original video games. Right. But it takes a lot less of a team to create it. One person or two people can create it. So with a small team like Soma Games, mm -hmm. that's easy to crank out, especially for app development. Their, oh, their especially... development teams can be on this and this and this, and they have like two programmers or something. Especially if it's text-based. Yeah. Like two or three, even four people is enough to create a text-based game. Definitely. It's... It's pretty fun. Uh, you can download it on Apple or on uh, Android. Android. Um, I think it's also on PC. I'm not 100%. Uh, I would have to double check. But with those, you can download them on your iPad, on your Nook, on your what have you, what you whatever, and be able to play that. It, it's pretty enjoyable. I haven't gotten too far into it. But it definitely gives me that, that uh, old vibe of back and back when we were playing like flash games and such and they had a lot of these back in the early early 2000s mm -hmm. and, uh, back in my video games class where it's the rhetoric of video games and it was pretty much introducing us 
um, younger, like younger millennials, uh, to the wilds of the text-based adventure games, how they started out. But it's definitely reminiscent of Colossal Cave, which I, I appreciate. But back on to the Scout. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed the cutscenes at the beginning where it's all drawn up. So it felt like a old, like, reading rainbow sort of uh, story time. Yeah, I noticed that. It had fantastic art, beautiful art. Uh, the end credits, too, with, with the concept art. And oh, I love that. How they that. drew everything up with their, with their one um, song that they were able to really uh, get licensing and to be yeah. able to create for the game. It, it was beautiful. Just, I I really appreciated the concept art at the end credits. It, like, just seeing the rough sketches of those specific scenes from the actual gameplay. And then all the Doctor Who references as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, it, I, I actually appreciated that because not a lot of games with the end credits will actually show concept art. Yeah. They'll have, like, a specific... Um, gallery that you can go to to look at the concept art and most of those will be behind like a paywall or something too yeah so like with a uh, horizon zero dawn it took to get the collector's edition to be able to get the uh, concept arts and such and that's the same with like if you're looking at a detroit become human as well mm, which ooh, sad game. that game uh <laughs> That, yeah, it's just, it, oh, that game. That one hits you in the feels. It, it does. <laughs> um, but that one also was hidden behind another paywall to mm -hmm. be able to get to the concept art with that. Or being able to get to, um, with like a Bioshock or something, you'd have to get like the collector's edition, which is buying the original trilogy games and then buying it for the new console because mm -hmm. you want to play it for the new console. And that's pretty much like putting it behind another paywall. Yeah. I enjoy that they didn't put this behind another paywall. It's right. normally like about 15 bucks, but they had a uh, Steam sale, um, a COVID-19 sale where I was able to get it for seven and some change with tax. Oh, so yeah. Just having something that is like a love letter to, it, it felt like a love letter to people that enjoyed Brian Jake's works. And I can see that. Having that small team giving like a, here, thank you for, for playing our game. Here is how we created Sophia. Here's how we created Liam. Here's how we created the world. It's really enjoyable to watch, especially going through like at least 30 minutes. For me, it took about two hours to complete it because I'm a completionist. I yeah. like to get all the achievements, all the everything in it, try for everything. So it took me about two hours to go through it versus you're like... 30 minutes to an hour and a half or something like that if you just do straight straight through yeah yeah if you just do straight through it's because you're, you're typically a straight through i try to be a straight through unless if it's an actual game that i can see myself sitting and playing over and over and over and over again yeah stacked up to like all the new games like the um witcher or, or, or red dead redemption 2 or something people are just gonna go to like the witcher or red dead redemption 2 not really give this one a glance but well, even if they do they'd probably do that whole straight through and then just be like nah whatever yeah like go a one on and the next done one. sort of thing for a lot yeah. of indie games like uh the honk bonk one that everybody's honk playing bonk. it's a goose that has a ladle and it flops around it's in a 2d and you've seen you've seen some of the memes for it. It's like uh, mess with the honk, you get the bonk. That's what that okay. game is. Okay. <coughs> well. Yeah. I, I don't. <laughs> I, I I don't really understand that. But this one, it it does make you want to go back into it at least for another run through. Mm -hmm. Um, playing at least once as, as Liam, once as as Sophia, but yeah. their storyline different differences, it's not really different. No, it's not as different as you think it would be when you, because I played as Sophia. And I played as Liam. So it's not really that different. It's just a little difference with the dialogue. Yeah. On who you choose to play at first. 
Cause one I of think the, that's really the only difference there. One of the side missions was to, in the Pirate's Cove area, to go visit um, a loved one's grave. Oh, yeah. It's the same with Liam. Liam lost somebody, Sophia lost somebody, and you go pay your respects to that to them i yeah. don't remember who um it's i been think it was sophia's father yeah and with liam it was liam his friend and or his cousin i think it's um can't quite remember the exact but i think it's whoever you play you have you go pay respects to your significant other's loved one that they lost so like liam would go pay respects to his father-in-law Mm -hmm. because I think they just got married at that point. No, they were about to get married. They were doing the scout thing, um, wanting to become the scout. And then the next day or something, they were to be married. But you okay. don't know if yeah. they lived or died at the end, and I hate that. Um, no. At the end, Liam did, if you played as Sophia, Liam did live. And then vice versa for, yeah. for Sophia. At the end of Act 1, they they do survive because how she gets tossed out, like they get tossed out of a uh, the lighthouse yeah the lighthouse they get tossed out of that but then it's like tell me another story did they survive oh no child that's another story for another time and then you get escape the gloomer which i i don't know if that was resolved or not but it was just like a hanging there like What's going to happen next? Uh, give us something else with this. Continue the story. It's it, it's the definitely one of those where you're like, okay, they survive somehow. They have How? To. Yeah. Not entirely sure, but yeah. they do survive <laughs> somehow. I, I think that's something if they weren't going to do uh, more with the scout, if Soma wasn't going to do more with the scout, I think they were wanting to leave that ambiguous so that way it's up to the player if they survived or not. Unless Possibly. they're deep in with the Gloomer or with the next one, which I was kind of disappointed that the Gloomer was the follow-up. If it was a standalone Redwall game, that would be something different, but it not a lot of people like the text-based game, so having that would have would have been nice to to have for a follow-up for the Scout or something. I could say that. There's also another note I had to mention in this. Mm -hmm. It gives you achievements. I was about to say that. <laughs> it gives you too many achievements. It doesn't feel like you actually worked for the achievements. No, and when you're, it's like it just throws out achievements just to throw out achievements. I counted at least five achievements within five minutes given as soon as you uh, meet up with whoever, if it's Sophia or, or Liam, when they're in prison. Yeah. There's at least five achievements there that was just like, <laughs> bloink, bloink. It's like, like, here's an achievement. Here's an achievement. You all get achievements. Yeah, it, it, it totally Oprah there. Especially with like a, <laughs> remember all those bloop. Remembering those achievement. Like, yeah. Come on, let me work for it a little bit. Right. Like, it's nice to have them, especially when you have, uh, if you do like Xbox, which we played on Xbox. Mm -hmm. If you do on Xbox and they give you the daily Bing challenges where it gives you points or something for having three uh, achievements for the day, that's perfect. That's awesome. It, it gives you that. You're like, okay, done. I can play my other games. Right. But it, it felt like it was a little too handholdy with giving out achievements. Like, yeah. Yeah. It, it, too many um, achievements. Yeah. And instead of us working for it, I'm, I'm like, wait, I didn't even do anything and I got an achievement. I just pressed a button reminding about vows and I got an achievement. And then I escaped uh, the, the dungeon area and then I got another achievement. And then, like, come on. Yeah. I'm like, scratching my head with to how be many... like, uh, breaking so many barrels or something. Like, how they did with the ending when you have to run away from the big baddie, um, the big bad rat, um, when you have to run away from him doing the breaking so many oars and breaking so many, um, things like that. I, I can understand that. That definitely kind of reminded me of, like, a Crash Bandicoot. Mm. Like the ending with the big boulder when the boulder's coming after you. Scum snout. That's Scum his name. Scum snout. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, but it's like when you're running across kind of like Temple Run in a way, that's what mm-hmm. that part felt like to me was like a form of Temple Run. Well, with, with Temple him. Run, you don't have any anybody chasing you except for like that gorilla that if you fall over, the gorilla gets you. Scum Snout is the gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> But, like, you go a certain direction and you try to lead him to breaking those barrels and stubbing his toe or whatever on something. That's difficult to do. It is. Because you try to do that and you get stuck in one area. And then you launch yourself into oblivion. (laughs) Exactly. Or you get caught before you're able to go on and then you gotta repeat the beginning Mm -hmm. of that entire run it it can get super frustrating oh my god it can get super frustrating yeah (laughs) but i think it was worth it i I think it was worth the half off the the half off sale that was going oh yeah even for like the full price at 15 like 15.99 or something like that i think it's definitely worth a, a play just yeah. at least experiencing other games that are out there. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I I find that um, even some of the simplest games are, like, some of the best games. Definitely. Like, if you look back at, uh, like, a N64 or something, or uh, even, like, a back in the arcade days when there's Street Fighter or something, like, those are incredibly simplistic. Um, just a joystick and two uh, buttons and yeah. such, and you're really only using, like, two buttons and your and your thumbstick, so it has that arcade feel. If they made a arcade machine for it, that would be awesome. Yeah, I could, I could see that in an arcade game format. However, I don't know about if the graphics would be a good thing for an arcade style. I think they would. Because if you look at a lot of the new arcade style games these days, like the new shooters or uh, some of the new Street Fighters that are in uh, cabinets, they pretty much are the same graphics and such. The, it just depends on the computing engine and, and the, okay. what kind of graphics card that they put inside the machine. Well, then that would make sense doing it that way then. Yeah, but I think that if if they were able to get it into like a couple cabinets and such, and and put it in a few uh, like Dave and Buster's or something, a lot of a lot of people might uh, be interested in it. Or like, but from a home setting mm-hmm. for passing some time and and getting into some nostalgia. I think it's definitely definitely worth a play. It, yeah, cause it, it definitely feels like a love letter to a lot of people that enjoyed the Redwall series. I can definitely see that. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> so out of let's say out of 10 wheels of cheese what, what would Sophia give Redwall game? The well, scout. Well, I was going to say what type of cheese. <laughs> it's a good. <laughs> There, there's so many types of cheese. It's all cheese. Um, I would at least, with some of the flaws that we found with it, mm-hmm. granted, they did a good job for the amount of people with Soma Team. Yeah. Um, I would, I would give it at least a seven. A seven? Yeah. That's really good. Seven out of ten. That's that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, I would give it about a seven as well. Mm-hmm. Like, cause there's a lot of bugs in it, but you know, yeah. that's, that's to, to be expected and such. It's not as buggy as like a Fallout 76, which that has <laughs> a good, like 200 plus people on that. And they still aren't able to get their stuff together. Right. So, right. um, for passing time for, for all of it with, even it's it's uh, nitpicky flaws and such that isn't exactly our style of gameplay that we like to. Might be somebody else's style of gameplay. So yeah. I would definitely give it a seven out of ten wheels of cheese. Like a, a good solid seven. Yeah. Yeah. So you can find this game in your stores on the PlayStation, on Xbox, or on Steam. 
it's like oh they did put it out on steam yeah it's i forgot about that yeah so it's definitely worth a playing if you want to play through it um if it's not your thing it's not your thing but i definitely would recommend it for just trying something new especially with book-based games because i mean Mm -hmm. there's like the witcher games and everything that's a book-based game there's a lot of other book-based games that are out there right um but for a small indie team it's it's enjoyable yeah it's enjoyable it it definitely passes the time a little like a little time it doesn't give you like that huge oh my god i'm super 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 invested like a a red dead online or something like that or an assassin's creed like right one of those big titles but it's one that's like oh i'm playing a video game this feels like a video game this is cool this is awesome yeah it's not like i am this character it's oh this is a video game it gives you that childhood nostalgia yeah especially starting out as kids playing video games it gives you that whole oh my gosh it's mario (laughs) like how a lot of these little kids are it's perfect for getting your kids started out in games yeah Especially, Especially for, like, this next generation of consoles and such. Oh, definitely. I agree. Yeah, instead of putting them on the Grand Theft Auto and not knowing <laughs> that that's not good for kids, because, oh my god. Not just that. Some people just don't care. But some of games does. Yes. And I, I honestly think that they definitely geared this game more towards kids than adults and they teens did. anyway. They did. Yeah, they did for classic play game players, um, 80s game players, back when gaming was just starting out. <sighs> back when it was Pong and the Odyssey. Like, yeah. Yeah, Pong, Mom and Dad used to play Pong. Yeah. So it, it definitely has, like, those, those vibes, but with better next-gen graphics. With a really pretty art style. Yes. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? No, I think we kind of covered it. Okay. Well, that is going to be all for us today. We hope you enjoyed this new episode of the Atomic Nerd Alert. On the next one, what are we going to be talking about, Holly? Oh, the next one could be anything, really. It could be movies. It could be another game. Do you want to do what we're playing now for the next one? Something like that? Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. We could we could do that. Cause... Something to pass the time during the uh, COVID-19. Oh, that definitely. That will get you a little bit more invested. How about we go for Persona? Oh. Persona 5 Royale. Yes. Yeah. It's a really good one. It's a good one. <laughs> I, I played the the first Persona 5 and completely through, and I'm, I'm at the uh, Madarame's... Uh, part right there but we will leave that up for For the next next episode episode. (laughs) so stay tuned for that all right guys we will catch you on the flip side for the next atomic nerd alert and bye see ya bye bye